Jeff, so good to see you again to talk about General Mills. And let's begin by talking about food prices. Everybody is complaining about their grocery bills. And the latest reports do confirm that prices are high, up 13% over the past 12 months. So far, people are still buying your Cheerios and Pillsbury baking goods, snacks, and a lot more from General Mills. Tell us why. Consumers are still buying General Mills products and, and food products at home because they represent a great value. And even though the costs have gone up because inflation has gone up about 14 to 15 percent for us um, this year, consumers are shifting their habits to at home eating from away from home eating. And the reason they're making that shift to food at home is that it really costs a lot less than eating out. And so when economic times get difficult, as consumers are feeling the pinch right now, and they really are feeling the pinch, what we saw during the Great Recession about a decade ago was that the same habit of consumers shifting their spending from away from home eating to at home eating, it took place in the Great Recession as well because food at home is a really good value. But you have raised prices, right? We have increased prices because our, our costs have gone up by 14 to 15%. And so we've raised prices. We've raised prices less than our costs have gone up because we've had productivity gains. And, and we know the consumers are feeling pinched right now. And so the first thing we always try to do is become more efficient ourselves. But when we see record inflation, which we are right now on our costs, um, the, prices, the prices do go up. But it's still, even then, it's still a great value for consumers to eat food at home and specifically General Mills brands than it is eating out. Well, as you're looking for value, you know, a lot of people are talking about this so-called shrinkflation where the package is smaller of, let's say, Cheerios, but the price is the same. What do you say to that? You know, shrinkflation gets a lot of media headlines, but it's not something we spend a tremendous amount of time with. For us, the, the, you know, when people talk about shrinkflation, it's usually under the context that we're trying to trick consumers somehow, and that's absolutely not the case. Consumers are very smart. And so when when we want to make sure that we offer them real value. So for example, um, you know, when people are living paycheck to paycheck, sometimes they want a smaller box of cereal if, if they can only afford that. Other times they may have three teenagers at home. They need a big box where the price per ounce is less. They may shop at different locations. They may shop with coupons. And so it's really incumbent upon us to add, in, to add value in the best way we can. And consumers define for themselves what makes, makes value for their family. And that's different from household to household. You recently told investors that you expect strong revenues and earnings going into 2023, and the chances are that inflation will continue to rise. So I'm guessing that you are going to continue raising prices. By how much? Can you quantify it? We did say that we're going to see inflation throughout this, throughout our fiscal year, which started in May. But we also told investors that most of the pricing that we would need to accomplish what we needed to this year was already in the marketplace or announced to retailers. And so it's not necessarily true that prices will keep going up from here. It really depends on the landscape itself. But, you know, as I mentioned, we've seen 14 to 15 percent in inflation and our prices have gone up. Uh, but, but even then, not as much as inflation has gone up. Well, you know, as you know, there are many forecasts that uh, we're either in a recession in, in the U.S. or there's a risk of a recession over the next uh, 12 months. You've been through many of these down cycles in your in your career. How do you see this one playing out? You're right. I've been I've been in the food business for more than 28 years now. And, you know, a, a couple of things I will tell you first is that whether we're in a technical recession or not, you know, consumers are, are feeling stretched. And I think that's going to continue. One of the things I can also tell you is that no matter what, one of the lessons of the last few years, is we don't know exactly what's around the corner. Uh, but for General Mills, we've been able to pivot quickly, whether it's a pandemic or George Floyd's murder or whether it's uh, war in Ukraine, we've been able to pivot quickly. And I'm confident as a company, we'll continue to do that no matter what the economic cycle ahead of us. Can you still grow General Mills even in a slowing economy? You know, we, we can, and we were, we were even growing General Mills before the pandemic hit. But one of the things I'm most proud of is over the last few years, we've become a better company. And none of it had to do with the pandemic or inflation or, or COVID. What it, what it really had to do with is we've, we've made significant changes over the course of the last few years. We've changed our portfolio. We've added Blue Buffalo pet food. We, we have divested things like YoPlay in Europe and Dough in Europe and Hamburger Helper here in the U.S., we have changed our organizational structure, become a lot more lean, and we've invested in data and technology and, and investments in consumer marketing that are going to help us go forward. So we are, we are highly confident that an environment post-COVID, post-war, post-recession, 
General Mills will be a stronger company than it was coming in is because we've made a lot of significant changes along the way. Well, Jeff, you've come up with some very innovative and successful strategies in dealing with these things that you're talking about, soaring prices for ingredients, uh, the scarcity of ingredients. Tell our viewers how you reformulated the recipes of one of your very popular snacks, Totina's Pizza Roll. It was a very successful change that you made. It has been successful. And Totino's Pizza Roll is one of General Mills' $9 billion brands. And and we've kept it on store shelves because we feel like we owe that to consumers, but it hasn't been easy. In fact, we, there are a couple of ingredients we haven't been able to get for Totino's. And as a result, we reformulated pizza rolls and pizza about 25 times over the last year, just in an effort to keep it on shelf, but also to make sure we maintain the quality of those products that consumers are expecting. And I'm happy to say that, that even given all those changes, the business continues to grow. In fact, we're going to invest about $100 million dollars in our manufacturing facility in Ohio to, to expand the capacity of that business. But it's a great testimony to the, to the engagement and the hard work and skill of the people at General Mills and our consumers have benefited as a result. Well, what are some of the lessons that you learned from that whole uh, experience and all of the reinvention? One of the things we, we've lear re really learned is that the, the engagement of our employees is key because it, it takes a team of people coming together to make things like that happen. Diversifying our supply chains is becoming increasingly important. And just the ability and willingness to pivot. Uh, we've been a great company for 155 years, but before the pandemic, probably no one considered us to be very fast. Now we're both fast, and I, I still think we're a pretty good company after 155 years. And we've learned the value of being able to change quickly. So what do you think has been behind the success of General Mills over all of these years? I think we've been successful because we've been willing to change, not because we've resisted it. And that's important for a company that, that's been around since 1866. We've changed our portfolio, added brands like Blue Buffalo and divested businesses like Yoplait. We've changed our organizational structure, become faster. We have invested in data and technology, but also consumer marketing to make our brands more and more relevant. And those things are important because we talk about all the changes that have happened, pandemics and wars and social unrest, and now you know inflation. We've been successful through all that, and we think we'll be successful after that, not because we re resisted change, but on the opposite. We've actually leaned into change, and those are the kind of things that kind of span the arc of time and make a company successful no matter what the, the current situation they find themselves in.